Hi, I'm Pete Licata, and I am here to talk to you about coffee for somewhere around three minutes. And today I'm going to talk about manual espresso distribution, not using a tool. Uh, now to begin with, manual distribution really was a necessity back in the day when everybody used hopper grinders. You would essentially overfill the basket a bit, dose it up, distribute it around to fill in the gaps, strike off the rest into the hopper to reuse for the next dose that you had. Um, I think that this really worked because we weren't really sticking to static doses. We didn't, somebody didn't even know we should weigh them. And uh, we just kind of filled the basket to our expectations. And for all the faults that an old rober or some of those grinders had with a hopper, you know, I bet we were better at distributing back in the day. Uh, now, when we started using time grinders, something big changed though. We started sticking to static doses of coffee. At the same time, for laser precision cut baskets became the norm, which always seemed to be a little bit bigger than the old stamp baskets. Uh, when we have a large basket, we only put in the exact amount we want, say 20 grams. The basket should not be overfilling and it can be harder to distribute that coffee around, um, especially if that coffee is lightly roasted or very dense to begin with. Since coffee as a powder moves and falls inconsistently, generally needs some sort of intervention to ensure it will produce an even extraction, distribution is still a necessity. Unfortunately, our manual distribution can be tricky or even impossible if we uh, stick to the way we used to do it. And oftentimes I'll see baristas updose uh, their coffee to fill the basket or rely just on hand tapping or selling techniques to achieve an even bed. Now, to give you some advice, first, if you haven't watched my video on dose placement, please watch that. I think it's actually really important here. But if you want to manually distribute your coffee, I do recommend considering your dose versus basket size versus coffee density. Basically, the more dense your roasted coffee is, the smaller gram rated your basket should be, even if you're keeping the same dose weight. If your coffee is dense and the basket is big, you just won't be able to manually distribute properly without a significant updose most of the time. Now, too much headspace can be just as bad as too little. Uh, if your machine has a screw that hangs down a little bit, like this one, um, you'd see the tip of the screw indent the puck just slightly, but not the screen indentation. If your machine has a flat screw, this can be a little harder to judge, but shoot for around one or two millimeters below that screw. Uh, if you find the coffee is sitting very low in the basket, you may want to updose a half gram or a gram, but really you should find a smaller rated basket. Um, you can, of course, settle the coffee by tapping, but if you have this much space in the basket to begin with, uh, you haven't really been able to ensure the distribution is even and you're more likely to get channeling. Uh, in these cases, the, the distributor tools can have a positive impact, but I'm going to cover that next time. The keys to remember for good distribution are to move horizontally rather than vertically, at least the beginning of your distribution. Um, make sure the gaps have been filled completely. Remember where your coffee was stacked. Those ten areas tend to be more dense and need more pulled away from them. Uh, I don't usually subscribe to a single method, but using a simple finger dosing is easy and cheap. Uh, if I'm dealing with low volume, I tap the exterior while remembering that the bulk of the weight is shifted toward the spot where you tap. So I'll tap the opposite side from a large mounted area. Keep a focus on where your coffee is being shifted versus where it started and you'll be on track to have an even manually distributed dose. This has been 3 Minutes of Coffee. I'm Pete Licata. Thanks for joining me.